Okay, thank you. Uh, as our colleague mentioned in the, uh, before, uh, we are in a case where we are performing a due diligence and we are in charge of doing a patent valuation. So for that, we are going to use uh, a special formula that is in, in, the, in this case uh, for the patent valuation and uh, I will explain a little bit what we have in the formula. So we have the cash flow modeling in the first part, uh, the turnover and the reference parameters where we found the technological criteria, the portfolio related criteria and the competition criteria. Then we have uh, the royalty rate and we have the cost assi assessment, the estimation of cost from portfolio maintenance and corporate tax uh, is there and the risk assessment is here. And then uh, in, the, in the other part we have the WAC, the assessment, the assessment of business related basic parameters and the weighted average cost of capital is here and we have estimation of useful, li useful life of the product that my colleagues will be presenting before me. One thing we need to determine in order to proceed with our calculation of a patent value is the uh, useful life of the patent. And usually we start with the maximum uh, useful life, which is determined by the maintenance. So as long as we can maintain the patent, uh, pay the maintenance fees, uh, that's the maximum for us. Uh, then we go to duration of usage of the patent and usually it's less time and on average it's between three and five years for a patent. Uh, we can also look at the product life cycle if duration of usage is not very cl clear for us and um, the product life cycle um, can estimate the useful life of the uh, patent. And if the product life cycle is not clear either, we can look at the technology life cycle. Uh, for us, in our case, uh, our earliest patent um, priority date is, two th is um, sorry, in 2000, so we are in 2009, which means that we will have the minimum of 11 years for that patent of the maintenance life, which is the maximum. However, uh, due to the product life cycle, which is at the very beginning at the moment, uh, and uh, we're taking into consideration the, um, that competitors have not started developing any other substitute products at this stage. Uh, we estimate that the product life cycle will be around six years for these patents. So the next factor we have to determine is the uh, relevant sales uh, because we are not going to consider the total uh, sale value of the product but then the usefulness of the patent in the product. And uh, you may re uh, remember from the lecture, it is coming to almost 10%, but that is not the case here. If you see uh, the product or the topic of interest here is the horizontal drilling machine. And uh, Schneider has six patents, out of which uh, two are on the overall construct of the horizontal, horizontal drilling machine. And one is granted, the other one is still in application phase. And then the other four are on the drilling bits and then the drilling head, which is a key feature which enables the drilling machine to uh, have a drilling underground, even through a difficult uh, terrain. And also uh, it helps in installing the pipes. Like, uh, so they have a patent called like fishing net or fishing model, which holds the pipes and uh, pulls it in, into the holes which has been drilled. So looking at it like the patents are like very, very important to implement the product. So the values are very high. So that's why we came to a value of like 75% for the horizontal drilling machine and then the spare parts which can be sold as, like, uh, as an after sales market like uh, which works with the drilling machine as 85% even because the value might be low, will be low. But then there is no option for them to buy some other spare parts other than our proprietary spare parts for this drilling machine. So the next important element within our method is now to identify an appropriate royalty rate for the Schneider portfolio. 
Uh, we start by considering all the information uh, collected for the evaluation process, uh, commercial data sources and also the knowledge we have from comparable uh, licensed transactions and uh, this helps us in uh, estimate a royalty rate uh, range which is from 2% to 6% and this is uh, um, depending on the quality of the patent portfolio and also of the protected uh, technology. Uh, within this range we can uh, thus assume that um, an average uh, portfolio and technology can lead to a royalty rate of, of uh, 4%. Uh, now, within this range, uh, we need to identify the appropriate ro royalty rate and for, for doing that, uh, we make use of this um, uh, linear scoring model where the royalty rate uh, is uh, a function of the score and we would like to obtain uh, this score we yeah, we obtain this score by uh, assessing Schneider portfolio against uh, um, uh, technological and, and competition uh, factors. Uh, and in practice, we identified uh, six uh, um, factors and we assign a score for each of them against the Schneider portfolio. So um, from, the, from a value of 0 0.8 to an upper level of 1.2. And as an overview, we can, uh, we can say that we can see that uh, uh, the, scoring are, uh, the scores are quite, quite high. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, from a technological perspective, uh, we have a product and process claims which are implemented in the production. We have uh, uh, the functional units uh, which are protected. Um, the future, um, well, the technology life cycle is at the beginning and uh, uh, the technology is the key selling proposition. And uh, moreover, when it comes to competition, uh, we have no or few attributed uh, covered by competitor uh, portfolios. And moreover, um, there are no substitutes uh, in the mid-term. Uh, mid <coughs> um, so um, this uh, evaluation leads us to an overall score, which is uh, uh, obtained by uh, summing up the uh, individual scores. And uh, we get to this uh, 6.9 overall score. With this, uh, uh, we now go back to our uh, linear model, uh, linear scoring model, and uh, we can see that uh, this score is associated to a royalty rate of 5.5. So, based on this modeling and this analysis, we can then assume that 5.5 is a, a, yeah, in a, an appropriate royalty rate for the Schneider portfolio. With the introduction of the uh, monetary patent value calculation a few minutes ago, we have learned uh, that we have to derive the asset-specific asset risk factor. And uh, in this case study, it's all about the patents. We've heard about the importance of patents in that case. Um, and we have uh, the asset-specific risk factor is basically the legal risk factor. That means uh, we have to uh, assess the, the legal risks in this aspect. And this is done by comparison, uh, comparing a default scenario where we know the average risks without any further information, which is that column here, to our actual case. And uh, yeah, the changes are applied in this column. And let's go through them one by one. Countries uh, and status of the patent. So we are facing um, applications in uh, all relevant countries, so the main market Germany is covered as well as we have the future mar perspective market of Europe covered and in addition we also have US applications. So this will reduce the risk and also the applied discount. The next thing is o uh, ownership, contractual issues. We have no information about contractual issues. We see it a very um, simple transfer as all the, uh, the patents are owned by uh, um, the startup. And uh, yeah, we also, also assume that all the rights are with the startup, so this should be an easy transfer. That's why the risk and also the applied discount is pretty low. Then patentability, invalidity. Um, so far, 
uh, roughly 60% of the uh, file patterns are granted. So there's a remaining number. Uh, we have no information about opposition or other legal measures against the patent. However, um, the risk has to go up a bit as not all of the patents are granted yet. Freedom to operate. As this is a purely invented technology by the company, we don't expect competition. Um, substitution technology uh, products within the next six years, which is the horizon we're looking at right now, the time horizon we're looking at right now, um, the applied discount factor is lowered. Basically, it's half. There's nothing we can say about the scope. That's why we stay with the uh, average value here. So there's no further information available. So that's the average risk. We stay at 7%. Circumvention. Um, yeah, we also, that's again, that's the, the six years uh, time frame there. Within this time frame, we do not expect um, a high risk of circumventions. And that's also why this factor is lowered. And detectability, it's a tangible. It's a product which we can acquire, which we can look at. So detection of infringement should be more or less on the easy side. So this is also below average. At the end, we have to calculate all these factors. You see the formula there, and we end up with a, a risk discount of 43%. And by that, I guess we almost have all our figures in order to make the final calculation, and I hand over to my colleague. So now that we basically have all the ingredients we need for our evaluation together, we actually will briefly go through uh, how we actually calculate the numbers in the end. Um, so we do more or less a step-by-step -step process um, where all the different factors will come into, into place at some point and I will say which factor is when actually applied. So first of all what we see, uh, we started with a useful lifetime that we are trying to consider here. As we can see we take a lifespan uh, from 2009 to 2014, exactly the six years. Um, and we start with the revenue, so we see the revenue streams separated for the drilling machine and for the spare parts exactly for our useful lifetime. Um, based on the total revenue that we have here, now we apply uh, the reference perimeter and try to find out what is the relevant share of sales associated to our patents. So we apply our 75 and 85 percent since those are different for the drilling machine and for the spare parts. Uh, we still stay with two different columns here and apply the different rates. Uh, what we end up is the total relevant sales um, in the next step, we apply the asset-specific risks, which my colleague uh, before explained. Uh, there we came up with the asset-specific risks of 43%. That is again the factor we apply. So we reduce again the stream here and only take 43% of the total relevant sales here. Uh, in the next step, we will apply the royalty rate, which came up to 5.5%. Um, this one, or in this time, the rate is the same for the drilling machine and for the spare parts. So basically we apply the same rate for both revenue streams. Um, then we come up, if we apply this 5.5%, uh, we end up with actually the license fees. So that is what you can see here. So now we are at license fees over again the useful lifetime. Uh, in the next step, uh, we actually, this is something not explained so far, uh, we subtract the cost that we associate with the portfolio, so we have maintenance costs for the IP uh, and maybe even also prosecution costs for all those applications which are not yet granted. So these specific costs are uh, subtracted uh, at that stage and we end up with the total license fees after costs. Um, and at that point, now another aspect needs to be considered and that is taxes because in our relief from royalty um, scheme, we actually, somebody is, is uh, getting this license fees and he would have to pay taxes on this. So again, the stream or the, the revenue stream, the license stream is reduced um, with our tax rate, in this case, 28.8%, uh, um, and we end up with total license fees after tax. Um, now, still, um, we have all our license fees over time. What we are looking now for is the present value, so the value at the point of time when actually the valuation takes place. Uh, therefore, we discount our license fee streams uh, on that side with a weighted average cost of capital, uh, which can be assumed for this company at 12%. Uh, so, for example, one can see here rather easily 
uh, for the discounting that uh, the license or the license stream is only taken account for roughly half of the last time period. So 0 0.51 is the present value factor uh, that has been chosen here. Um, so these are the present values for the different or over the different time. These can be summed up. Um, and then we end up with a sum of values of 2.2 million roughly uh, and then there is a so-called step up factor applied in the last step. This is what we see here uh, with 1.25 so the value increases again. This is due uh, to the fact that this actually is an asset deal and as an asset deal for the buying company, in this case Bauma AG, for which we are doing the, the valuation, um, will be able to generate cer certain tax savings or tax amortization over time for the uh, price they are paying. So depending on actually the value or the price they are going to pay, they will have some tax savings uh, and this is being taken account for uh, in our step up factor, in this case 1.25. And so finally, in our valuation, after considering all aspects, um, we come up with a value for the portfolio which is uh, roughly about 2.7 million euros.